Well, tonight we're talking uh, to Scotty Reed. Um, Scotty was part of the class of 1956. We're hard to believe. Hard to believe. I know it. We're sitting over here at the uh, home of Prudy Matthews. She's putting on the 65th class reunion, and we're talking to some of the, the, the people of the class of 1956. That's right. Who would ever thought we'd make it this far? I mean, you know. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've got that walking stick, but you're, you're actually doing pretty good. Well, uh, I got the arthritis too. <laughs> oh, those Wrightus brothers, they're terrible. Well, my doctor told me you and 20 million others. <laughs> <laughs> so, Scotty, tell us, uh, we'll talk about all the things you've done in this community, but tell us what it's like in 1956. What do you miss, or what do you think was different? Or Well, it's an interesting story because we were such a small town. Um, my dad ran the mo local movie theaters. And um, when I was 13 years old, I can remember us buying our first automobile. Um, we lived three blocks from the movie theater. We lived three blocks from elementary school. Uh, we rode, I rode my bicycle to Ben Crosby Stadium. I lived two blocks from the high school. Uh, the grocery store was one block away. Uh, the Chevrolet garage, which we didn't have a car, but that's where we bought our first car. It was one block away. Everything was pretty handy. Yeah. Uh, that was an expense we didn't have. Um, we, a lot of our neighbors had automobiles, but we didn't see any need for it until my father got a, a, a new management job and uh, we finally bought an automobile. So that was that was a basic something. I can remember uh, when I was younger having had my first trip in an automobile and I drove from my house, which was on Lee Street, up to what is now the new water, the, the old water station, the right. old water treatment plant for the town of Front Royal. And that was my first ride in an automobile. Yeah. And it was an old, uh, old uh, Chevrolet that had knee action. Every time you hit something, the car, whole front of the car jumped up and down. And that was sort of exciting. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we had um, baseball was a big, big item and football. Local sports was a tremendous thing. Even as a youngster, uh, the RMA had their football team, the high school had their team. And we had um, the field was actually in the location we're in right now was was down on the corner of 6th Street and um, the road that goes, goes out to Avtex right on the corner there used to be a, a, um, a miniature golf course there but that whole field the whole block was a football field for RMA and everybody played there also Avtex had a really uh, good uh, I think semi-pro maybe baseball team and and, and my dad and I used to walk out on Sunday because we had blue laws here at that point. He didn't have movies on Sunday. And so we would walk out from our house out to the, to the Viscose plant and watch the ball games. My dad was a big baseball fan. So everything was local. Uh, grocery stores, uh, if, you, if you needed peaches and when they were picking peaches, the guy would come to your front door and will sell you peaches. If you needed apples, it was the same way. Your neighbors were, uh, even though we didn't have a garden, they saw to it that we had food that we could can and take care of. And uh, mostly during the winter time, you always, uh, if you were hungry, if it wasn't in the refrigerator, you could go down in the basement and you could always find a can of, of something that something, yeah. <laughs> that filled your gut. Yeah. But but it was uh, uh, those were good times. Uh, there were uh, some of my friends who are here this evening uh, grew up with me. Just around, lived, everybody lived around the corner from yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. So well, you're known as a realtor, or I don't know about now, but I mean, you're kind of probably semi-retired. Come on, I am see. very retired, <laughs> or just tired. <laughs> tired. <laughs> but you know, for years, I mean, you showed me a lot of houses in this. I uh, did show you a lot of houses. I think, you, I think you sold me a couple too. I certainly right? did. <laughs> You're but, one of my uh, best customers. That's right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had um, I started out after I graduated from college. I started out as an accountant uh, for the old Aftex plant. I worked there for eight years, 
uh, about three or four years into that, I thought maybe this thing called real estate would be pretty interesting. So um, I started working part-time. I went to work for Donald Vaughn. And uh, the rules are now, I don't know then, but I don't know what they are now, that you have to work three years in real estate full-time to get your broker's license. So after eight years at F FMC, I resigned and, and uh, went to work again for Donald Vaughn for three years. And then I got my broker's license and I started Scott Reed Realty. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful thing to... Uh, to get involved in that. I love sales. I love houses. Um, I went on to uh, study architecture uh, after that, after my college uh, degree and and uh, took all the ar architecture and engineering courses I could and, and became a real lover of architecture. So um, that was something that uh, uh, it, it all tied together. The fact that I loved architecture and and I love the people of Front Royal. And at that point in time, a lot of people out of Northern Virginia were coming out. And, and they were some of the finest people I've ever met in my life. They were, they were all different types of walks of... of uh, uh, they were, some of them were physicians. Some of them were government employees. Some of them were engineers. Some of them were retired uh, naval officers. And, and it goes on and on. And we worked quite a bit in the, in the Fort Valley area. Um, and it's one of the most beautiful areas. If you haven't seen it, you should go to the Fort Valley yeah. at some point in time. Um, and so, uh, it's, it's in the business has been good after, uh, about 20 years of Scott Reed Realty. I decided what I really like was working with customers. So I went to work with Brown Rolford and, um, uh, and then after that, I, I went to work with Weikert and that's where I retired from Weikert. Uh, for health reasons, so yeah, yeah. I remember you had a few you had a few uh, scares there where you were down for quite a while walking around anyway, and you were down. But I remember you were on the sticks, and but you're back. Well, I had um, uh, I found out that the the what was a heart murmur was actually more was more an aortic valve problem. So about 13 years ago, I had um, aortic valve surgery at the University of Virginia. And they put in a cow's valve in my heart, and so... Um, I wonder why it hurt some mooing going on. That's right. I like ice cream, too. <laughs> so they, uh, uh, they said, they've told me now that most people who've had that surgery, uh, after about uh, uh, 10 to 15 years, you, they go back in and, put, and redo that valve. And uh, so um, uh, that's something I, I guess I'm going to have to work on. Yeah. But it gives you a whole new lease on life, didn't it? Well, I hope so. It, yeah, I mean, you were able to get up and move around and... Uh, well, the biggest problem I have is what a lot of my friends have is weight problems, so... Yeah, I know so, that problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, my doctor and I work uh, pretty hard on that, but uh, the fact that I've had the knee problems uh, has uh, really um, curtailed my exercise yeah. Uh, and of course, COVID has done a really quite a curtailment on it. So yeah, yeah. we hope that's all going to get better. Well, as a realtor, you know, it's all location, location, location. So I've asked some of your classmates about, uh, you know, how do you see Front Row going forward? Are we going to be able to maintain this small town charm? Um, Mike, that is a really big question. Um, uh, I think you're talking to someone who's turning 83. And I don't know that I have, I know where you're coming from, but I don't know that it will be my decision. I think it will be the decision of the young people. Uh, there'll be young people who will maybe remember what it was like to be a small town. And hopefully that will take the town the way it, they want it to be. I keep thinking, even though it's my town, it's really our town. So um, I thought I had a wonderful experience growing up in my town. And, and the young people are going to have to decide what kind of town they want it to be. But the bottom line is, whatever town it ends up being, it's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot of understanding. And, and, and people are going to have to listen to one another and to try to, to develop new concepts or restore some old concepts and and try to look at the town 
with open eyes and say, what do we have, where are we going, and what do we want it to be? Yep. It's not my call. Not your call. Well, you're, you're delegating it to someone else now. That's, I guess, you know, old people can do that, can't they? That's, that's a privilege. <laughs> privilege of gray hair and baldness. That's why we have, can't grow hair on chrome. You know, that's what they say. Well, it's Scotty, like you said, part of what we're doing, too, is, you know, people see you out and about in the community. You're, you do. I've seen you around. Your, your wife, especially. She, her and the ladies like going to breakfast at LD's. I, I see you. My, <laughs> my wife uh, uh, has spent uh, 47 years as a nursing director of the emergency facility at the hospital. And she's seen us all. That's right. She knows everything from the inside out. <laughs> so, um, and she knows most everybody. And uh, she loves this town also. But she's originally from Baltimore. She was a city girl. Yeah. And I snagged her when she, when her mother moved up here and married Frenchie Tolliver. And uh, so that rest of that's history. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In fact, this weekend is our... 58th or 59th anniversary. Well, you, gotta, so. you don't know for sure. So it's a double hitter this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, now when people see you, they'll say, I know who that is. And they come up to you and say, hey, Scotty, how you doing? I, I seen you on the Royal Examiner. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, I hope everybody sees the Royal Examiner and sees how good a job that you're really doing. Um, and it's uh, really easy to find you. I have it right up on the top of my computer, Royal Examiner. So you get that email. All I have day. to do is just hit it. That's right. So I don't pay too much attention to email, but it's that little button up there, and it takes me to the Royal Examiner. Well, we appreciate the, your patronage. Well, we appreciate your diligence. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Due diligence. Well, it is, and you know we're going to start our fifth year in September. That's wonderful. That's hard to believe. Happy hard anniversary believe. early. Yeah, I guess. So. Again, Scotty, thanks so much for talking to us and. And I know you enjoy these little get-togethers that Prudy puts on. And uh, she, well, it's, it's it's a big effort for her, and I'm glad to be, I'm glad to be supportive. Yeah, thanks again. My pleasure. Thank you.